Oh boy, I sure can't wait to reach into this video box and find something relevant. Huh. Fire Emblem 30th. What's Fire Emblem? Hey, there's a new limited time re-release coming out, and you know what that means. It's time to panic buy a game, and it's the perfect time to get into a new series. Fire Emblem. This is by far one of my top Nintendo franchises. The craziest thing is, almost half of the games haven't made it outside of Japan, and that's a tragedy. So, what is Fire Emblem? Well, in general, it's a medieval drama where you pick up the reins of a hero, lead a band of colorful characters, and slay gods. And that's so freaking cool! Now what genre is it? Tactical role-playing game. What kind of genre is that? It's simple. You control a small army of units to complete different objectives like escaping, capturing an objective, or Should killing every, every last one, one of them. them. Okay, a generic list of traits that make a Fire Emblem game a Fire Emblem game. Check. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, what do I love about this series? Well, what can I say? I just kinda love everything about it. My initial exposure to Fire Emblem was through my brother. He'd been a fan of the series for like, most of his childhood. And the actual game that got me into playing Fire Emblem was Awakening for the 3DS. I failed you. So, like I said, Awakening was my first actual experience playing Fire Emblem, and I was hooked right away. Taking place around 2000 years after Shadow Dragon, Awakening was supposed to be Fire Emblem's swan song. Due to diminishing sales, Awakening became an ambitious goodbye that would allow the series to end in a high note. It eventually came out, and then BOOM BABY! ALMOST TWO MILLION COPIES! Woo! The amount of love and care that they put into the game was a success, and it launched the series into its current standing today. Awakening is a fantastic entry point into the series. Any callbacks to previous games are just the little extra cherry on top for old time fans. And getting into these games at all isn't really hard. The stories tend to stay within their own games with a couple of minor exceptions. This game in particular polished up a lot of systems from previous Fire Emblem games. Things that really make it shine. I noticed that entering combat is significantly smoother. And the in-combat predictions are also even better. Looking smooth like butter. Oh, and don't even get me started on the little animation that plays before a critical hit is about to take place, dude. Talk about a reason to get up in the morning. Well, what makes it special to me? It's the whole package, dude. I enjoy just about every Fire Emblem story, no matter how ridiculous it is. The colorful cast of characters always makes the game, too. And another thing I do is I just pick a unit, and then I craft him to become the perfect bringer of death, before inevitably resetting because I'm a dum-dum and I can't play this game good. Shit, did I just reuse the same joke for two videos in a row? The gameplay of Fire Emblem is straight up addicting. The deeper you get into the games, the harder it is to stop playing. The adrenaline from risky plays paying off, and making smooth brain decisions without getting punished, it's like my, uh, uh, it's like, it's like my weed. All in all, the mix of story, character, and gameplay, it is just, mwah, it is magnificent. So what game should I play? Just buy all of them! But for real, there's a couple of good candidates for Barbie's first Fire Emblem. If you're a weenie who hates challenges, Sacred Stones is regarded as one of the easiest Fire Emblems. The stories and characters are still great, and, best of all, it has that classic Fire Emblem feel that many fans have felt that the series has lost since the great Together, S ranking love, of 2012. Peaceful world. However, I still feel like the best place to start really is with the modern games. For two reasons. Firstly, it's the direction that the series is going in and will probably continue to go in. And secondly, they're going to be the easiest to access since they're the newest. So, what does that leave us with? Fire Emblem Awakening, Fates, Shadows of Valentia, and Three Houses. Awakening brought the most new features to the table and literally saved the series. For the most part, the writing is top-notch and you really learn to fall in love with the characters. The balancing does leave a lot to be desired, but who doesn't love breaking a game by taking advantage of its systems? Fates' writing blows. It also has some of the most fun and expressive gameplay and map design of any Fire Emblem. I especially enjoyed Conquest for the challenge it brought. It is literally the most I've struggled in a modern Fire Emblem game, and I love it. The battles in Conquest really do feel like a desperate struggle, and honestly, while it gets made fun of plenty, the story of Conquest, Birthrights, and Revelation are pretty passable. 
Shadows of Valentia was a remake of the Black Sheep of the series, Fire Emblem Gaiden. Honestly, and I'm gonna save this right off the bat, I don't think that this is the best intro into Fire Emblem if you're new, as there's quite a few oddities. <laughs> map design <laughs> compared to most modern Fire Emblems. But if you're feeling adventurous, this might just be my favorite out of the 3DS emblems. Three Houses is the newest release and has the most sales. It's a fantastic story with excellent characters and writing, but it also looks like a 3DS game. Who cares though? I immediately fell in love with this game. You're given the opportunity to choose between three different house leaders. And the house leader that you choose determines the fate of Faudland. It's so cool! The character writing is sharper than ever, and I always have a hard time picking which units to use. They're all just brimming with personality. This has also got to be one of the most open-ended Fire Emblems when it comes to character and roster customization. You can literally run through the game only using the starting roster, never recruit anybody else, and you'll do just fine. Or you can be like me, desperately recruit every single child and bring them to war. You know, it's up to you. Unit customization is freaking dope. There's a ton of classes and class skills to unlock in order to make them the perfect student. The only downside is to factor in the possibility that you very well won't have certain units or unit types. The maps tend to be a little bit bland to say the least. This is so that no matter how you end up building your team, you still have a fighting chance. While each of these games are good starting points in and of themselves, I think the real winner here really is Three Houses. It's the most well-rounded package, and most importantly, it's the easiest to access, since it's not on a currently dead system. That's not saying the other games are bad though. Truth be told, I love them all. Fire Emblem as a series is very near and dear to me. It's brought me a lot of joy, and it's made me feel like a part of its world. Each game I've played has been a fantastic experience through and through. I still don't know what a Fire Emblem is. Now the last thing to mention is the Japan exclusive games. Okay, so get this. Nintendo and thinking Americans are too dumb for video games. Timeless classic. Ah uh, yes, the timeless classic combination that stripped us from a lot of games. Well, it was probably going to do that for all of Fire Emblem until 2003, where due to peaked interest caused by Smash yeah. Bros. Melee, Fire Emblem 7, The Blazing Blade was released, or as many in the West know it as, Fire Emblem. Ever since then, we've gotten every FE game, barring FE 12, cause fuck that game I guess. Regardless, that still leaves us with around 6 games, since Shadow Dragon is officially being released here, that we haven't been able to play. I'll keep this section brief since I actually haven't gotten to play these games yet. Fire Emblem Gaiden, released for the Famicom. It is the oddball sequel to Fire Emblem that would eventually end up being remade in 2017. Sweet! Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem is a retelling and actual sequel to Shadow Dragon. Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. This behemoth of a game is widely regarded as one of the greatest Fire Emblem games, and a truly epic tale. Fire Emblem, Thracia 776. It's somewhat of a side story to genealogy, as you liberate the neighboring nation of Thracia. Fire Emblem, The Binding Blade. This was Fire Emblem's first foray into handhelds. And what else can I say except Roy's our boy. Lastly, and this one's a doozy, Fire Emblem, New Mystery of the Emblem, Heroes of Light and Shadow. It's a remake of FE3 with some changed content. Wow, Nintendo does not want us to know what happens after Shadow Dragon. Well, that's about all the Japan exclusive mainline games. It's a real shame that none of these have been officially localized. However, where companies let us down, the fans tend to pick up the slack. You can find fan translations for all of these delightful games, whether that be reading a guide or, uh, uh, using an emulator with a patched English ROM. Fire Emblem! Happy late 30th to this old gem of a series. And honestly, it is one of the most diverse and fun gameplay experiences I've ever had the pleasure of playing. Every game has its pros and cons, but I know that I'll enjoy just about all of them. I can't wait to see where the series goes next. No! Hey, thank you for making it to the end of my video. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. And if you want to stay updated, hit the bell to get notifications. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.